I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation. It is a great honor for me to speak uh, in this conference for Offer Gaber. Uh, over the years, I have uh, benefited tremendously from uh, him. Uh, just yesterday, I received some corrections <laughs> <laughs> from him for a, a, a paper by, by other people that uh, will be used in this talk. But <laughs> fortunately, there was nothing serious. As another uh, illustration of his uh, tremendous uh, generosity, uh, this talk will be based on uh, applications of uh, a couple of marvelous theorems of uh, Gabber that were written up by other people. <laughs> so here the <laughs> keywords are after Gabber. <laughs> so uh, the subject of this talk um, is about uh, some old questions on L independence. Uh, so Sarah certainly made many conjectures on L independence. And uh, the ones that I'm going to talk about are uh, those he made uh, in uh, his definition, in his uh, recipe uh, of the Hasselwey zeta function of uh, smooth productive varieties over global fields. So uh, he made these conjectures C1 through C8, so eight, con eight of them. Uh, actually, a, a couple of them already appeared earlier uh, in his paper with uh, Tate uh, uh, that were stated as problems. So uh, here's the definition of the Riemann zeta function. Um, this can be uh, generalized without any problem to uh, a rhythmic zeta function of a scheme of finite type over spec z. Uh, I just have to replace uh, the set of integers by the set of uh, effective zero cycles on, uh, on x, and to replace n by uh, the norm of the, of the cycle. And uh, with the Eulerian product, you can write it as a product of uh, local zeta uh, factors. As we all know, uh, Grothendieck gave a cohomological interpretation of these uh, zeta, local zeta factors. Um, so now uh, let x be a variety over, uh, over a field. Actually, I'll take a variety over a finite field. Uh, Grothendieck defined this uh, analytic cohomology with compact support, um, equipped with a continuous action of the Galois group. Then uh, the zeta function. Uh, can be written as a product, alternating product of um, characteristic polynomials of Frobenius acting on the uh, compacted supported uh, analytic cohomology as a consequence of uh, the Grothendieck trace formula. So a natural question here is whether uh, these uh, polynomials, which are a priori uh, with coefficients in QL, actually ZL, uh, are actually uh, integer coefficient and uh, independent of L. So in the case where X is proper smooth, um, uh, vague conjectures uh, tell us that the action of Frobenius on uh, the I's uh, cohomology is actually of weight I. So you can extract uh, these pi l from uh, the zeta function. So uh, as a consequence of this, uh, these uh, polynomials are actually uh, has coefficients in z and independent of l. And these were uh, Serre's conjectures c1 and c2. So these are now known. Um, another consequence of the vague conjectures is that by spreading out, uh, you get that for uh, proper smooth variety over an arbitrary field, um, then uh, the Betty number uh, of the analytic cohomology is actually independent of L. So this uh, br spreading out argument will be uh, a major uh, theme of the rest of the talk. So now let's get back to uh, the Hasselwey zeta function. Uh, so here's uh, Sarah's recipe. So it is defined, uh, the local factors are defined as uh, characteristic polynomials of Frobenius acting on the uh, inertia invariant part of the uh, analytic cohomology. So in order to, for this uh, formula to make sense, 
uh, he has to assume that uh, this polynomial is actually uh, independent of L. So that is his uh, conjecture C5. Actually, he made uh, he stated it in a slightly uh, in slightly more generality. So uh, now uh, we work over a local field K, by which I mean a complete discrete Belgian field of uh, finite residue field F Q. And uh, so now assume only that X is defined over K. Then uh, Sarah's conjecture says that uh, the Frobenius uh, acting on the inertia invariant part of the analytic cohomology uh, has characteristic polynomial uh, with coefficients in Z and independent of L. A related conjecture is it also a conjecture concerning the full structure of the local Galois act action on, so of course, on HIL. So is yeah. it is a more refined conjecture with the full. So you are. Uh, this one, this C8. Okay, yeah. yeah, so, <laughs> so yes, uh, there is. Uh, he also made this conjecture C8 that uh, for uh, the full HI, uh, the action of uh, the wave group is actually uh, has uh, traces independent of L. So, uh, does it imply the previous one? Yeah, I'm uh, coming to that in a moment. <laughs> So to explain the uh, relationship between these uh, two conjectures, uh, let me recall the monogamy weight conjecture, which says that uh, the eigenvalues of um, uh, Frobenius liftings on the graded pieces of uh, these uh, cohomology for the monogamy filtration are pure of weight i plus n. So uh, combined with the conjecture C8, this implies that uh, all these graded pieces are actually independent of L, because you can extract them, uh, they have different weights. And uh, from here, actually you get that all the uh, primitive, primitive parts are independent of L, so it follows that uh, this conjecture C5 uh, on the inertia invariant part holds. So actually, uh, Serre didn't uh, make this monotony weight conjecture, but he uh, made conjectures C8, C6 and C7 between C5 and C8 uh, that were special cases of the monotony weight conjecture. So uh, these are uh, Sarah's conjectures. Now uh, for over um, a local field, a finite residue field. Now uh, if uh, we now allow uh, the residue field to be an arbitrary field, then, uh, well, there's no uh, wave group, but we can still uh, consider uh, the action of the inertia group on the cohomology. And uh, Sarah conjectured, his conjecture C4 says that for any element in the, in the inertia group, um, the characteristic polynomial uh, on the ice analytic cohomology uh, has coefficients in Z and independent of L. So uh, to put this into context, let me also recall uh, the local monogamy theorem of uh, Grothendieck, which says that for X of variety, uh, which by which I mean a separated uh, scheme of finite type over K, um, not necessarily proper smooth. Uh, the action of uh, the inertia is actually uh, quasi omnipotent on the uh, compactly co uh, supported cohomology. And this has uh, several um, uh, variants due to uh, Deligne, Gaber, and Iluzi. Uh, which uh, says that, uh, first of all, you can replace the compactly supported cohomology by, by euro analytic cohomology. And uh, this uh, subgroup, which acts unipotently, can be taken uh, to be uh, independent of L. And also the um, index of uh, unipotency uh, can be taken to be, to be I. 
which is the uh, chronological degree. So uh, this is some other uh, problem of independent of L. Now, uh, let me concentrate in the case of uh, equal characteristic uh, for a moment. So uh, let me recall that uh, in equal characteristic, the monodromy weight conjecture uh, was known. It was due to uh, uh, the lean uh, terrasoma. So the lean in the case where it is defined over a curve and terrasoma uh, maybe in general and ito for a generalization to uh, residue fields of finite type. So uh, here's uh, uh, the statement of our result. So uh, still in the equal characteristic case, so let's recall K is a complete discrete evaluation field of uh, uh, residue field K uh, of characteristic P greater than zero. So both of characteristic P greater than zero. Uh, let X be a proper smooth variety over K. Um, then uh, conjectures C4 and C8 actually hold. So let me recall that for C4, it says that for every F in uh, the inertia group, uh, the uh, characteristic polynomial of F acting on HIL is uh, uh, in Z bracket T and is independent of L. And for uh, C8, it says that if you uh, assume the residue field to be uh, finite, then for the lifting of Frobenius, the above holds. So this was uh, known, the C8 was known in special cases uh, to uh, Deligne and, and Terrasoma. Now, as uh, mentioned before, so this combined, so the C8 combined with the monogamy weight conjecture implies uh, conjecture C5 that the uh, inertia invariant part of the uh, cohomology is independent of L. Now, uh, let me make a, a number of remarks. So, uh, previous results. Um, on uh, well, previous results on uh, in general characteristic without uh, equal characteristic assumption, uh, which holds for not for individual uh, cohomology but holds for uh, the alternating sum uh, of the traces. So first of all, there were this uh, theorem by uh, Gaber uh, over a finite field already that uh, for uh, f in the V group. Uh, the alternating sum of the traces is a rational number uh, independent of L. And then uh, for local fields, first of all for general uh, complete discrete version field, uh, the action of the inertia uh, is uh, actually in Z and independent of L when you take the alternating sum. This was a theorem of uh, Vidal. So these are uh, okay, variants of uh, the conjecture C1 and C4. And finally, there's uh, this uh, variant of conjecture C8. So if K is now a local field, a finite residue field FQ, then for uh, the action of uh, the vague, uh, elements of the V group are uh, independent of L, which was a theorem of RTI uh, in the proper case that can be extended to the general case. So now uh, let me explain the, the strategy of uh, a proof of uh, such theorems. So basically the, uh, uh, the proof is a, uh, is a spreading out argument. So uh, whenever x is defined over a field f of characteristic p, we can uh, spread it out to something uh, of finite type over fp. So there is uh, this uh, cohomology on the left-hand side is now uh, spread out to uh, least sheaf on the, on the right-hand side. And when we vary l, we get a system of least sheaves on the, on the base b. So we are led to study, uh, instead of this uh, system of uh, Galois representations, to uh, the system of 
analytic sheaves uh, on, a, on a base scheme. So now um, our basic setting is a slight generalization of the, of the previous one. So we work uh, not just over a finite field, but over uh, the ring of integers OK of a local field. So here I do not assume that k is equal characteristic. So k is just a, a Hanselian, so OK is an excellent Hanselian discrete evaluation ring of residue field uh, FQ with no restriction on the characteristic. And uh, we take x to be a scheme of finite type over uh, spec OK. And I denote by uh, k the uh, Grothendieck group. And uh, we should fix a number of, of primes, a system of primes, Li. Uh, now given a system of uh, elements of the Grothendieck group, a system of virtual sheaves, Li, so each Li is in uh, the is a QLI bar attic sheaf. Um, this system is called compatible if uh, for every uh, point x in x, so here uh, by a point I, I consider only uh, locally closed points, for every locally closed point x and every uh, element in the V group, the local V group, uh, the trace of f uh, on the uh, stock of Li is a rational number independent of i. So basically, the, the local traces are uh, rational numbers independent of i. So let me recall that this uh, being a locally uh, closed point here uh, just means that it is uh, either a closed point in the generic fiber or a closed point in uh, uh, in, the, in the special fiber. Of course, there is a more general notion of uh, compatible systems with uh, traces in a field extension of Q uh, when you fix it in embeddings. So now, uh, fundamental theorem of uh, Gabber says that a compatible system is defined in this way, that is over a finite field, where, uh, are preserved by uh, grothendieck verdier duality and grothendieck six operations. And this can be extended over uh, spec OK, over uh, the ring of integers of a, of a local field. Now, um, for our purpose, it will be important to consider uh, not just uh, points on the curve, but also uh, so not just points on the variety, but also points off the variety, so uh, points on the on the boundary of the variety. So uh, let's take the simplest case. If C bar is a smooth curve over FQ, and I take a Zariski open dense uh, subset C, uh, we are interested in uh, just having uh, compatible systems on C. But we look at points uh, on the boundary, on the complement of C and C bar. And then, of course, we have these uh, local fields. So we, we, we look at these uh, local uh, Galois groups, which has which fits into the short exact sequence. And uh, this can be uh, defined uh, well, algebraically by taking the Hanselization of uh, this curve at this point and then uh, removing this, uh, this point itself. Now this generalizes uh, to uh, this general setting. So now let x bar be any normal scheme of finite type over S. And uh, we take a ZRC open uh, x in x bar. Um, and for any point uh, of x bar, uh, we take the Hanselization of x bar at x. And then we remove the boundary. So this gives us a, an open uh, subscheme, which gives us a rejection. Uh, so this uh, pi 1 of this gadget is uh, an analog of the uh, local Galois group. And the kernel is the inertia, uh, which actually appeared in, in Takeshi's talk this morning. 
So here's the uh, uh, key definition. So now given a system uh, on X, we say that it is compatible on X bar, or it is uh, compatible along the boundary of X bar minus X. Yeah, I assume that these uh, Li's are least sheaves, so that I get a, maybe a, a representation of the, uh, the pi 1. So what is the value group here uh, for... Uh, so just take the inverse image of the value group here. So no, but uh, a normal scheme of fire, what is S? S is... Uh, so I only, I only consider locally closed points, so it's just the Euro uh, value group, I think. Ah, okay. Yeah, I only consider, so this, uh, this okay. bar uh, means uh, locally closed points. Okay. So the residue field are either uh, finite fields or local fields. So there's a well-defined uh, notion of uh, way, way group. Well, not quite local fields because they're only in the Zillion. Yeah, yeah, Hanselin. Okay, but it's the same. <laughs> so if you like, so everything goes to, uh, to S, and uh, we can take... Uh, the map from uh, pi 1 of this thing to pi 1 of s. Yeah. And that uh, gives a way of defining this, this way group. So the definition is that uh, for every point, uh, every locally closed point on, uh, on x bar, or actually, uh, um, for example, on the boundary, um, the action of uh, the local way group uh, is uh, have traces in Q and independent of I. Now, a natural question here is, uh, given a system that is compatible on, on this open subset X, is it automatically compatible on X bar? So is it compatible along the boundary? So I, I don't know the answer to the question, but uh, it does hold up to stratification or modification. So let me explain what, uh, what I mean by this. So what we actually proved is, is the following. So let X be a scheme of finite type over S, and we take a, a, a system that is compatible. So I also assume that the uh, index set I is finite. Then there exists a part uh, stratification of X into locally closed subschemes uh, such that each stratum X alpha admits a normal compactification X alpha bar over S uh, such that the restriction of uh, the system to, to each of the stratum is compatible along the boundary. So this is what I mean uh, compatible along the boundary up to uh, stratification. A more or less equivalent formulation is uh, that it is compatible up to a modification. So now the setting is slightly different, but the, uh, uh, the conclusion is that there exists a modification. So I take X bar and I take uh, open subs, uh, de Zariski dense open X then there exists a modification uh, of X bar such that the pullback of the system uh, is compatible uh, along the boundary of Y, of Y bar. So use it. Why do you try it? Is it an isomorphism to the good thing of the X? So things you, you don't change the good ones. Uh, I think I, I don't know, yeah. So we, yeah. So in the proof, we, we may have to change the, the good locus. So of course, these are uh, uh, theorems of Deligne in the case where X is a curve over FQ. And in the case of a curve, you have uh, is, uh, no need for stratification or uh, modification. It is uh, simply uh, compatible implies compatible along the boundary. Yeah. Now what is uh, perhaps, uh, at least I find it funny, that these uh, statements imply uh, a valuative criterion 
for a compatible system. <coughs> so uh, I have this uh, system that I assume, uh, well, uh, for the moment I don't assume it's compatible. Um, and we consider as uh, all evaluative criterion uh, commutative squares like this, where OL is a uh, Hanselian evaluation ring and L is a is, uh, field of fractions. So it's not going to be uh, discrete, discrete evaluation. Not necessarily. Uh, not necessarily discrete, yeah. Then uh, a system Li on X is compatible if and only if the uh, restriction of the system uh, to spec OL with, uh, to spec L, sorry, uh, with OL quasi finite over S is uh, compatible. Because for such L, you can also define the, the Ray group. Of course, uh, one side of the implication, so the from right to left is, is just uh, uh, just a definition. So uh, uh, the the only uh, content here is from from left to right. So the consequence of being uh, compatible is that it satisfies this uh, evaluative criteria. Now, also. Uh, in the uh, strictly local case, so if you just restrict to the, uh, the inertia, then the action is also independent of L. So these are the uh, uh, consequence of um, uh, theorem up to uh, stratification or modification. <coughs> now let's come back to the uh, to Sarah's conjectures. Um, so actually, we, uh, a consequence of this uh, valuative criterion combined with spreading out argument is uh, the following well, slight generalization of Sarah's conjectures in equal characteristics. So now OL is just a Hanselian valuation ring, not necessarily discrete. And uh, for X, a proper smooth scheme over uh, L, um, uh, the second point, the second point of this uh, valuative criterion implies that uh, the action of the inertia is uh, independent of L. Well, here I have uh, um, so left out the the part on the on the integrality. Basically, basically the uh, which which are uh, given by some other arguments, but at least the evaluative criterion implies that the characteristic polynomial is uh, <coughs> in Q bracket T and it is in independent of L. And the first part of the evaluative criterion gives uh, well, the, the, the generalization of Sarah's conjecture C8 in equal characteristic. So for any uh, uh, element of the Weil group, uh, the trace uh, is uh, in Q and is independent of L. So this uh, evaluative criterion was uh, very much inspired by uh, Gabber's evaluative criterion for the ramified part of uh, the fundamental group. So let me explain this uh, relation with uh, wild ramification. Uh, the ramified part of uh, pi 1 was defined in uh, the first paper of, of Vidal. Uh, Perhaps with the help of, of Gabber, and <laughs> so this uh, uh, the setting is uh, f over any. Okay. Okay. So these are uh, this is Vidal's definition. Um, so now uh, we take any excellent Hanselian discrete valuation ring. Um, uh, of residue uh, characteristic greater than zero. Now, uh, Vidal defined these uh, subsets of the fundamental group for a normal integral scheme separated finite type over S. Uh, there's this subset of a ramified part, this ramified part of the fundamental group, and there's this uh, wildly ramified part of the fundamental group. These are closed subsets, uh, stable under conjugation. 
so the definition is a bit technical. So for every normal <laughs> compactification, there was this uh, subset pi 1 r uh, subscript x bar, which is um, uh, the closure of the union of the conjugates of this image for uh, x bar running through geometric points of x bar. So basically, these are the local inertia groups uh, that appeared in Takeshi's talk this morning. So we take the image of all these, take the union, take the conjugate, and take the closure. So you get a, 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 a well-defined subset. And then we take the intersection with respect to all uh, x bar, with respect to all normal compactifications. Now to define the wildly ramified part is uh, uh, just the intersection of the ramified part with a union of the uh, appropriate silos. Now, Gabbard gave this uh, evaluative criterion uh, for this pi 1 r, uh, which says that pi 1 r is the closure of the union of the conjugates of uh, images of uh, the Galois group of L for L appearing in uh, uh, these uh, evaluative diagrams, where OL is a strictly Hansel evaluation ring, and L is the uh, fraction field of OL. So is this going to be a subgroup? No, it's just a subset. OK. Yeah. Um, so there's also a evaluative criterion for uh, pi 1 wr, for the wildly ramified uh, part, with where you just uh, restrict to uh, you know, the, the pro order of elements. Now, uh, one can define using this uh, wildly ramified sub, uh, subset a notion of uh, compatible wild ramification. So given a scheme uh, x over s, uh, a system, now I take a system of um, fl bar sheaves, virtual fl bar sheaves, because um, um, now we restrict to uh, the pro p silo, so uh, it suffices to consider torsion sheaves. Now, uh, uh, such a system has uh, said to be uh, to have compatible wild ramification if for every, um, well, first of all, we have to restrict to uh, pieces where uh, all the sheaves are least, and then we can talk about uh, Brouwer traces. Uh, for G in the wildly ramified part of the fundamental group. And we ask that these Brouwer traces are uh, rational numbers independent of L. And uh, as uh, Takeshi mentioned this morning, so there's also this notion of uh, same wild ramification, which is actually more, more general. It's a less restrictive notion. And uh, that was studied by uh, Takeshi and his students, Yuri Yadagawa and, and Yadagawa herself. And uh, there are some uh, uh, old work by uh, Deline and uh, not so old work by Vidal and some very recent work by <laughs> Saito Yatagawa, Yatagawa, and, and Kuo. Uh, there's also a related work by uh, Hiroki Kato, but uh, which is not uh, exactly stated like this, which says that uh, this notion of compatible well ramification is uh, preserved by all uh, six operations. Well, this notion of uh, same wild ramification is preserved by uh, four operations. And uh, so four operations? Uh, up, up, upper star, lower star, uh, upper street. Not preserved by duality. Uh, yeah, not, not preserved by tens. Uh, no, preserved by duality. Du preserved by duality, sorry, yeah. It is up. Yeah, but not preserved by tensor or, or hom. So actually, there's, uh, there's uh, just a quick uh, explanation of this uh, non-stability uh, by tensor, but uh, I didn't put it in the slides. Uh, basically, this is what uh, Takeshi explained this morning. So a way of defining the same well ramification is to ask for uh, the 
the trace so to be uh, in. Uh, so if you take the trace, so this Brouwer trace uh, a priori lands in a bigger field than Q, and then you take the trace to Q, and you ask that to be uh, independent of L. But by doing so, uh, you are actually getting some uh, subspaces which are not uh, subalgebras. So uh, that means uh, this won't be compatible. Uh, this won't be preserved by tensor product. Okay. Um, now uh, we we have this extension of scalars uh, morphisms. Um, uh, this maps. Uh, as in modular representation theory, so there is an isomorphism between kx with coefficient in zl bar with uh, kx with coefficient in ql bar. And there is also a reduction from uh, kx with coefficient in zl bar to kx with coefficient in fl bar. Uh, composing these two maps, we get the decomposition map from kx ql bar to kx fl bar. Um, then um, by combining uh, our evaluative criterion with that of uh, Gabbert, uh, we get the following uh, consequence that uh, for any uh, compatible system um, Li, uh, so this uh, decomposition map uh, carries compatible systems of analytic sheaves to uh, systems of uh, mod L sheaves with uh, compatible wild ramification. So this is, well, this gives some examples here uh, of uh, systems with uh, compatible wild ramification where uh, the recent work can be applied to. Okay. Uh, uh, that, that will be uh, all of my talk. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, so uh, well, at least one ingredient is uh, to use uh, an equivalent form of the of uh, Gabber theorem. So we we have to work with uh, uh, Dion's alterations uh, in the equivalent form. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have the paper stashed in my backpack. <laughs> 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 I believe that if, I mean, if you have some uh, alteration uh, of something that makes the ramification tame for one <coughs> thing, for one uh, KL, KI, yeah. then probably you can prove that the other ones are also tame, and then you can, is it the case of, uh, if uh, one, one is tame along, suppose you have a normal crossing situation, yeah. in the, and you have a compatible, so we are speaking about this different notion of compatible and compatible in the bound. Well, compatible is means that all close points, locally close points, you, okay, you have compatibility, uh, Let's say for least shift. So yeah. Okay, so you suppose you have an, a compactification with some normal crossing device, or maybe, I don't know, over the generic one of us, or all of us, let's say. So suppose you, you, you know that one of them is tame, then it follows that the others are tame. Is it the case? The others are tame. Uh, but in any case, we, we, only, we, we only have a finite number of L's, so. Ah, okay. We can make everything tame, so... Okay, you can make all of them tame, yeah. and then you can study the action of the group, yeah, yeah. let's say, and, and look at... Uh, but I believe that probably the, the, the restriction to finite number is not needed. If you can indeed uh, get the... I mean, if you prove... Yeah, the one tameness implies yeah, the other. Yes, yeah, so and then, then you can probably put all of... Then you can find a common uh, alteration, equivalent alteration that works for everything, I see. Okay, so another, another technical question about this kind of problem with CERN and so on. So we, we work with algebraic varieties, let's say proper smooth over the field of fraction, but yeah. we can instead work with uh, rigid analytic spaces of formal scheme. So of course you can put the same con 
conjecture for proper smooth digital analytic spaces. So, of course, some of the results on the wake monodrome is saying is yeah. used as a bright nature because you have, so you don't have this, but the other part of the kind of independence of L results, so is it, uh, uh, how much does it extend to this case? Did you, so? Um, th there were some results uh, by Mieda, I think, uh, but. Uh, yes, <laughs> years ago. <laughs> But otherwise, uh, I don't. I don't know about these uh, particular questions. Yeah. Okay. Are there cases uh, where the trace, the greater trace, is rational but not integer? Uh, well, integrality is uh, is another problem because uh, you can naturally have, for example, when you when you take dual, it, it will not preserve uh, 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 the integers when you take duals, or we we'll just take twists. So the, the, they, they naturally uh, occur. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, you just take take twist. So uh, you, you can have Q to some negative power as uh, eigenvalues. Yeah, but there are estimates on how the integrality is preserved, both the under under the usual operation for both the. Yeah, for both integrality and for inverse integrality. Yes, for, for single or finite field and also for the local field, which is the big way you did in your uh, yeah. So if we localize at, at P, so if we invert P, then uh, both integrality and inverse integrality is preserved by all the operations. Uh, sorry, except that uh, some of them exchanges the two. Uh, then uh, for at, uh, for the p divisibility, you have some bounds on on the uh, uh, on all the operations. Yeah. Any more questions? <coughs> so if not, <coughs> it's time to thank the organizers of this beautiful conference. So first, uh, Ahmed, uh, who I think is the main uh, actor in this organizing. Yes. 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 Yes.